Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I will show you how to create this short text title animation that I've seen in a recent Imangazi's video. So let's jump straight into After Effects and this is my recreation of the text effect. Even though it's really short and looks fairly simple, there are quite a few elements involved in creating this effect. So first of all, create a new composition. Let's make it full HD and let's just make it five seconds. First, let's add a text layer. Um, let's just type in master after effects. Obviously, let's align it to our composition. Let's move it up a bit. And I've used this Anik Devanagari font. That is a simple sans serif font that I think looks really good and modern for this kind of title. The next element that we're gonna create is gonna be the bottom bar. Uh, or a line. Click on the shape tool, select rounded rectangle tool, let's hold alt and set stroke to none and set the fill to the linear gradient. And now let's just draw the line below the text. Let's align it to middle. And now let's play with the colors. You can zoom in a bit and let's create a new point. Let's put it to 33%. Put this point to 66%. That way we have four points divided the gradient in three equal parts with four points. To each of those points, let's assign a color. All right, so I came up with this um, transition from yellow to purple to uh, light blue. Click OK. And now you're going to have to adjust these gradient points so that they make sense, so that they are at least as wide as the the bar itself that gives the bar this nice gradient that's uniform from start to the end we can select these layers adjust them a bit and now let's get down to animating the the portions let's just name this layer bar let's open up the rectangle properties let's go to rectangle path and here select the size property let's unlink the width and height of the property let's keyframe the size property and move this keyframe somewhere to the right. We are going to adjust these timings later and just set the width property to zero. That way we have this simple animation that starts in the middle. And let's select these keyframes. Let's just click F9 just to add some easing into it. You're also going to edit the velocities in the graph editor later, along with the text animation and movement animations. Now let's animate the text itself. So if we take a look at the original title, we can see that the text appears letter by letter from left to right. Also, there is a blur effect crossing the whole text effect from left side to the right side and kind of reveals the letters. Each individual letter is also a bit smaller at the moment it appears and then it kind of sits in its place and there is a bit of rotation going on as well. Another thing that happens, especially at the right side of the animation, is the letters actually coming in from the right side, but that's not as prominent in the beginning of the animation. So quite a lot of things going on and we're gonna try to recreate all of them. So first of all, we're gonna have to create a new animator and let's start off by adding the opacity, scale and rotation properties. Let's decrease the scale to 80%. Let's put the rotation to 12 degrees and let's put the opacity to zero and let's animate the range selector and keyframe the start at the beginning at zero percent and somewhere around three seconds let's put it to a hundred percent that way we have text animating in right now it is missing a lot as you can see but we are on good tracks let's select both keyframes click f9 to ease ease the movement and let's try to add a bit of that Relying in from the right side at the right side of the text. Let's add a new property. Let's add a position property. And let's just have the letters come in a bit from the right hand side. I would say somewhere around 15 could work, but we want it to occur at the second half of the animation more. To achieve that, we need to actually animate the animator property in a way where at the end of the animation, it is at 15, but it starts off at zero. So it doesn't really happen all that much in the beginning of the animation. And as it progresses, it starts happening more and more. In the end, you can really see the letters coming in from the right hand side. So. 
that's very good. And let's also keyframe this to F9 just to, to make the whole thing a bit smoother. Now, what I found using the blur property to create the blur effect doesn't really give me the, the results that I would like because it kind of happens letter by letter, whilst in the original, it's actually happening differently, where it kind of goes from left to the right side, not really being depending, dependent on each individual lettering. So instead of using the blur property, I'm gonna use a blur map to create that effect. And to start off, let's add a camera lens blur to the text layer. Right away, let's disable the repeat edge pixels so that we get rid of this a border that's happening around the, the layer. And uh, for now, you can just leave all the values here, but we are gonna be using this blur map property. But first we need to create the blur map and you do that by adding a new solid layer. You can just call it blur map. It can be any color you want because you're gonna be adding a gradient ramp to it. And the way this blur map is gonna work is if we set the blur map as the blur maps layer and set the effects and masks in the source property and disable the visibility of the blur map, the blur is actually gonna be at value five on the areas of the map layer where there is white color. It is gonna be value zero where there is black color and all the values in between will happen in this gray area and that is actually how we're gonna achieve that swiping blur effect from left to right. Now we're obviously going to have to play with these points for this blur map and we can turn it on and let's just move these points around so that we get the look that we want and just and put the black one to the left side and the white one let's put it somewhere around here for now and let's just see what happens. So as we move the white one obviously everything that's right from the la the white one is gonna be fully blurred. So if we move it over here, it you can see that the left side is getting less blurry. And as we move the black one, it is unblurring completely. So we can obviously work with that. But first off, let's increase the blur radius to something around 25, I think works relatively well. Maybe just a bit more. You can play around with these camera lens blur settings. One note that I'd like to give to you is that camera lens blur is relatively heavy on your processing unit. So the more you use it, the, the slower your render time will be. But for this title, it's gonna be perfectly good. So now to animate the blur going from left to right, let's just select all layers. Let's click U to see all the keyframes. And let's keyframe the blur map, the gradient ramp positions at the beginning. Let's just click you again. And here at the end, we obviously want it to be completely unblurred and sharp. So at that point, we want this one to be over here and, and follow it with the black one. Just, I'll just turn on the blur map to show you what happens here. So white is moving to the right side, black is following it, and this gray area kind of sits in between. That gray area is actually where this happens. This blur effect that I think looks pretty similar to, to the original. So if we play the effect now, it actually doesn't look all that much different. The next step is gonna be to add a bit of movement to both of the uh, line and the text. So to achieve that bit of movement, let's create a new null object. Let's call it movement control. Let's parent all these three layers to moon control and let's open the scale property. Let's keyframe the scale and let's put it at the end of this animation. That's where we want it to sit in this frame. And at the beginning, let's just put it to 125. Let's just see what that looks like. Let's increase it to 135 actually. Let's make it more dramatic, but it's really important for this movement to add some easing into it. And speaking of easing, now is the time to actually play with all these values a bit more. So let's play with the timings a bit and the graph editor, right? I think we could have the bar and the text animation to end at the same time, somewhere around two seconds and have the movement and the blur effect actually end a bit later, somewhere at around three seconds. And obviously the easing of the bar animation and the text animation need to be the same. So let's just select all of these keyframes. Let's open the graph editor. Let's just select them and move these yellow handles 
in this way where we would kind of have them start slow, then happen relatively fast and then ease into their final position. Now let's add the same easing to the movement control, but first let's select these blur map animated points. Let's click F9 just to ease them out and ease them in as well. And let's select the movement control scale property, select the points in the graph and just drag them in a way so that it starts slow, then really increases in speed and eases out very slowly. Um, I think that's a really nice dynamic. So let's see what that looks like. Very nice. I think that is very, very similar to the original. Now let's just add some texture to the background. In the original, we have these light leaks that are jumping around. I have found a nice background on the website Texture Labs. Link is in the description. Um, it's fairly similar and I think we can achieve a very similar look to it. Um, let's put it below the the animation. Now let's open the position property. Let's hold Alt and click on the stopwatch. Let's add an expression. Let's add a post rise time expression and let's put the number as 12 and let's put the wiggle expression and make it wiggle 10 times a second and each time wiggle for a hundred pixels. And that is going to create this really texture jumpy background. Now you can play with it. You can choose a different background. You can increase the size. What I would like to do is to add a bit of curves effect to it and just decrease the overall brightness a bit and just make a kind of an S curve like that so that it's more subtle. Next up, both of these layers are missing glow. So let's just add a glow effect. You can use the deep glow uh, effect, but that is a paid plugin. I will just use the regular After Effects glow effect. Um, what I like to do is to create one glow effect that is going to be very high in radius, but relatively low in intensity. So something like 40 radius with 0 0.4 uh, intensity. Let's use the original colors, but let's use the on top feature for the composite or original uh, property. Let's duplicate this glow effect, but this time let's put the radius to something smaller like 15 or even 10. And you can do intensity uh, maybe a bit higher, like 0.5 to try and get a more natural look. Then let's select both of these glows. Let's copy them and let's paste them to the bar as well so that we get a glowing bar and glowing text. So this is pretty good. But now that we've added glow during the phase when the text is blurred, I think it is a bit too blurry. So we can just simply go back here and decrease the blur radius to something like 20. And now I think it looks a bit better. This is looking really nice. You can play with the glow intensities and radius, whatever you think is going to look best for you. I like this look. It's a bit different than the original one, but I really love the contrast and the boldness of this title. Now you can see that in the original, we have some distortions going on on the text to create that distortion. We are also going to have to create a different kind of map that is going to be a new solid and let's just call it um, distortion map. To create that map, you add a fractal noise effect. And in the fractal noise effect properties, you can put the you put the noise type to block, increase the contrast a lot to let's say 1500 and the brightness you can increase to 312 as well. You just want some of these black rectangular spots. Open up the transfer property and deselect uniform scaling. In the scale width, you can leave it to 100 and the scale height, you can decrease it to five. Final property that you're going to edit is the complexity. You're going to decrease it down all the way down to something like one until it looks something like this. These black lines are what's going to create this line horizontal line distortion that we have going on in that original. Now to apply that distortion map to our text layer, type in displacement map in the effects and presets, drag it to your text layer, select the distortion map as your displacement map layer, select the effects and masks, and you can see a lot of distortion is already happening. However, we don't need as much. Obviously, we're going to put the vertical uh, displacement to zero and the horizontal displacement. You can put it to one or maybe even less like 
0 0.5, 0 0.4, and you get this nice bit of vertical displacement that looks like an old VHS tape that I really think looks very neat for, for this effect. And what I would love to do is to add a new adjustment layer over everything, I'll just call it styling, and add a bit of noise HLS auto to it. Let's just put everything to 3% and use a grain preset just to get a bit of grain. I think the noise, grain and gradients really complement each other nicely and um, that is pretty much it. So as you can see there were a lot of effects and moving parts to achieve this. If you want a shortcut there is a link to this project file in the description. Also in one of the upcoming videos I will create a motion graphics template for this text effect for Premiere Pro. I'll show you how to do that so that you can reuse text title like this one and save a bunch of time in the future. Once again this was heavily inspired by a recent Iman Gazi's video so shout out to him to his editing team and I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.